Oh, I put it right in front of him. Oh, you're still there. Oh, still he's there. Oh. He's back on it. He's still on it. He's still on it. I see him. Jack's Lake in Apsley, Ontario, Canada is an overlooked sleeper musky water in the Kawartha Lakes region, but should not be ignored. In this summer strategy session, first, Jim Serrick, along with musky hunters John Cowan and Pete Hoffman, dissect Jack's Lake in midsummer. Then Jim and pro guide Chris Torresano utilize various casting techniques in pursuit of early summer muskies in Illinois. We're at Jack's Lake Lodge on Jack's Lake in Apsley, Ontario, Canada. And this lake is one of the overlooked Kawartha waters. And I'm with my good friend, John Cowan and Pete Hoffman. John, bright sunny conditions. What do you think about Jack's Lake? Well, I like it. I think there's some humps out there, lots of weeds to fish, and we're gonna catch a big one. I like that attitude. Now, bright sun, mm -hmm. summer, hot weather. What do you think? Uh, first bait through has to be a bucktail. Second guy probably throws some rubber, and the third guy with, mix it up with something else. The Muskie Hunter, brought to you by Yeti Coolers, Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, Ontario, Canada, Shimano, Power Pro, Mercury Outboards, Ranger Boats, Joe Booker Outdoors, Muskie Mayhem Tackle, Motor Guide, and Muskie Innovations. Out here, you need a ride you can depend on and strength you can rely on. You need a boat that tackles the elements and handles the tackle. You need the quality and peace of mind only one brand delivers, the all-new Ranger FS Pro. It's raising the bar with more brains, more broad, and more bragging rights. The Ranger FS Pro Series, technology that makes waves, strength that crushes them. I use the flip daily. I'm fishing all the time in all types of conditions from snow to rain to super dry and hot days. Having a product that can not only work as a cooler for me but also as a dry bag is super important. It's kind of like a puzzle in my boat. I can plug in one size like the 12 and then the 18 goes here. It keeps my boat big and it makes my day on the river that much more enjoyable. At Mercury, we invested thousands of hours of engineering manpower so you can enjoy hours and hours of untapped horsepower. The V6 Mercury Pro XS. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. Jack Lake is located in Apsley, Ontario, Canada, approximately 100 miles northeast of Toronto. It is a hidden musky gem surrounded by the other Kawartha Lakes. Jack's Lake Lodge is located in Brooks Bay on the northwest end of Jack's Lake. The cottages are outstanding. There's a great beach and you're just down the road from the boat launch. Plus, you're really close to all the amenities in Apsley, Ontario. Jack's Lake's 3,800 acres and there is lots of water to fish. Although it's only 3,800, it fishes much larger. There's multiple basins, there's lots of points, islands, weed flats, rocky shorelines, a lot of variety of structural elements. So you've always got a place to find muskies. Fish? Yeah. How's he feel? What do you got, John? I'm trying to get him to the net. He's staying down a little, which is good. I like the fact he's staying down a little. Oh. Oh. Wah, 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 wah. What about 34, 35 inches? Ah.
I mean, one of the great things about Jack Lake and a lot of these Cuartha Lakes is that, you know, it's just a great place to vacation. You can have all kinds of fun and, you know, you can go tubing, skiing and doing all that. And of course, you can also catch muskies because despite all the traffic here and there, the muskies still bite. Stay on. See you down. I like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's turning Come towards you. Come on towards you. I got him. Yeah, sir. Nice job. Nice job. Wind was pounding into this area, right? Showed well, and it just ate it. Nice. Right. Got good. some little shallow reef and then weeds tucked in there with the thing. Yeah, a little hump here with some weeds on top. Very good. Nice spot. Yeah, nice spot. Good job. That was awesome, John. I mean, that was just, a, I love that jump when they came like that. It was just great. Yeah, nice another fish. Nice course. Really musky. nice. Look at that. I like that little pirouette you did. Hold on, let me take a look <laughs> at that one again. Let me see that guy. That is nice. Yeah. Nice fish. Really nice fish. Awesome. Let's put him back. <laughs> he said, see ya. Yeah, he didn't want to stay at the boat, that's for sure. Let's get another one. All right. Nice clean fish, too. Didn't have Beautiful a mark clean, on yeah. Looked like it, one of those that looked like it never been caught. Yeah, fish, yeah that's you know? what I was thinking. I like those. Like that fish was eating. He was, you oh, caught. That just he just he just piled it. He yeah. wanted it bad. Yeah. And that he was hooked really good. Feel very big. It's coming at me. He's off. I'm not even sure it was a muskie. <laughs> hit it as soon as it hit the water. It was just you know, and then I was bringing it. It was bringing it right in. It was right on the surface. When I'm fishing any type of blade, a bucktail blade, whether it be a cowgirl, junior cowgirl, whatever it is, I'm fishing my Shimano Tranks reel. But the important thing is I have a power handle. Now what I'm using is I'm using the lower speed Tranks 400 with the 5.8 to 1 gear ratio and I put this power handle on it. Now in doing that it gives me tremendous cranking power and speed. So if I'm fishing a double 10 bladed bucktail, I can crank it in fast and it's much more easy. So what I want to do rather than having the standard paddle handle, I go to the power handle. It gives me so much more power, so much more torque, and it's so much more easy to bring in the baits. Comfort, speed, power, that's what you want out of any reel, and putting a power handle on a Shimano Tranks makes it all work perfectly. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus, free two-day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. Out here, you need a ride you can depend on and strength you can rely on. You need a boat that tackles the elements and handles the tackle. You need the quality and peace of mind only one brand delivers, the all-new Ranger FS Pro. It's raising the bar with more brains, more broad, and more bragging rights. The Ranger FS Pro Series, technology that makes waves, strength that crushes them. At Mercury, there are no limits to the lengths we'll go to make sure you have no limits either. Unlimited adrenaline. Unlimited fun. Unlimited weekend. Except maybe having to go home eventually. The V8 Mercury Pro Access. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. As muskie anglers, we all plan, prepare, and are consumed in the pursuit of a trophy muskie. 
Skix is available with two-piece saltwater tested tough technology for easy storage in your boat or truck and are designed to handle any musky lure. You can be assured you're backed by precision Shimano technology. If you fish for skis, you need these. Introducing the all new Tour Series, the only true cable steer trolling motor with GPS anchor. With the impact breakaway and rugged metal outer column you need, the zero flex metal foot pedal you want, and traditional cables that provide smooth, responsive steering. All built with the industry's most powerful lift assist system. Truly universal high definition integrated sonar imaging and the industry's most accurate pinpoint GPS anchor. Now that's tournament grade. That's Motor Guide Tour. Where's the dream destination of all musky anglers? Ontario. And for good reason, it's loaded with giant muskies. Ontario has hundreds of waters with thousands of spots loaded with trophy muskies waiting for you. Don't fight the crowds. Explore the waters of Ontario. Fish alone and get back in touch with nature. Ontario, it's the place where musky dreams come true. To find out more about my favorite Ontario musky waters, check out GoFishInOntario.com. This episode of The Muskie Hunter is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario. Joel Miller from Sandyville, West Virginia, caught and released this 49-inch muskie from Stonewell Jackson Lake. One of the great things about the Quartha Lakes region is there are so many lakes to fish. You can fish Jack Lake, it's awesome, but there's also other lakes in the area. You can go to Pigeon, you can fish Buckhorn, all the Quartha Lakes are there and you can hop in, go into multiple ramps, fish clear water, stained water, whatever you want to do. One classic spot here on Jack Lake are these large mid to lake weed humps. So there's big coontail and cabbage beds that are there that you can see them just below the surface and they drop off where you can see the edge in about 13, 14 foot and then your boat might be in 20 foot and you're just casting around these shallow humps. They are just awesome musky spots anywhere you fish. Stay on, stay on. You get him, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. yeah. Hi. Really had to slow down for that one, huh? Nice. Yeah. It's quite the musky. Beautiful. Let's get another one. You want to talk about what we're fishing? Here we go. This cabbage stock goes forever, and this lush green stuff is loaded with muskies. You can see these deep weeds that are here, like in 12 foot of water. And a lot of these weeds on, on Jack are growing at 12, 13 foot. You've got deep cabbage, you've got uh, deep coontail. And in a lot of situations on these big points or bars or up islands, the boat might be in like 20 foot and you're throwing up in this real shallow stuff that then beautifully breaks off the edge. I mean, lots of thick cover on big bars and points that are just great stuff to fish.
Oh, I'm behind it. Oh, still, still with there. It. Still there. Uh, I think you buggered off. So I'm going that way. Oh, I put it right in front of him. Oh, you're still there. Oh, still he's there. there. Oh. Back on it. He's still on it. He's still on it. I see him. He's coming up for it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that is just wrong. <laughs> like I put it in his house trying to shove it in his mouth. You're shoving it in like, oh, here, take it. Take it. <laughs> like, you saw the second time I yeah. he grabbed it. I'm, uh. <laughs> Oh. Uh. Oh, one behind it, yep. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna eat it. Yes, John. <laughs> no, 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 come off it. Yeah. Got him. I bag. got him, man. Spectacular figure eight, John. Changed his mind. Yeah, changed his mind from two or three feet behind it. Yeah. That was just a spectacular, spectacular figure eight. I love it in the clear water. There's a day when it's kind of flat, a little chop off and on, and you see him coming in, and oh, gotta love that. All right, John, yes. Nice Jack, Jack Lake ski. Yeah, it's a nice one, huh? Absolutely. Good figure eight, too. Loved it. Yeah. Can slip them in here, and she will take off. You ready to down? Yes. You want to have a great vacation, catch a bunch of muskies, but not see a lot of muskie anglers? Jack's Lake is the place, and obviously the place to stay is Jack's Lake Lodge. Sometimes we get in those situations where we're fishing a shoreline and there's just floating vegetation everywhere on the surface, but the muskies are there and you still wanna fish the spot. So what do you do? The best solution I can tell you to do is take a cast and keep your rod tip underwater. I've got a longer nine and a half foot Shimano rod here and I basically go and I stick that rod tip about six inches under the surface and I keep it there during the entire retrieve. That way, as the lure's coming down, I may get hung up on some other deeper vegetation, but nothing on the surface. It's not the easiest thing to do. It's certainly annoying to have to do it, but sometimes if you want to catch them, you got to put your rod tip in the water and make it happen. I use the flip daily. I'm fishing all the time in all types of conditions from snow to rain to super dry and hot days. Having a product that can not only work as a cooler for me but also as a dry bag is super important. It's kind of like a puzzle in my boat. I can plug in one size like the 12 and then the 18 goes here. It keeps my boat big and it makes my day on the river that much more enjoyable. After 40 years on the water, Tracker Off-Road brings quality and value to the land. This is the Tracker 800SX. It's not afraid of hard work. It's not afraid of the roughest ground. It's not afraid of a heavy load. And it's not afraid of being very, very quiet. A breakthrough American value starting at $11,399 plus freight. The Tracker 800SX does it all. Ontario, Canada, the breathtaking scenery, the incredible wildlife, the endless sunsets, and the muskies. Ontario, Canada is home to the greatest musky waters in the world, and giant muskies are awaiting your next cast. Explore the waters of Ontario and catch your personal best. To find out more about my favorite Ontario waters, check out GoFishInOntario.com. Out here, you need a ride you can depend on and strength you can rely on. You need a boat that tackles the elements and handles the tackle. You need the quality and peace of mind only one brand delivers, the all new Ranger FS Pro. It's raising the bar with more brains, more broad, and more bragging rights. The Ranger FS Pro Series, technology that makes waves, strength that crushes them. At Mercury, there are no limits to the lengths we'll go. 
to make sure you have no limits either. Unlimited adrenaline. Unlimited fun. Unlimited weekend. Except maybe having to go home eventually. The V8 Mercury Pro Access. Light, quick, efficient. Mercury, go boldly. It's time for the Yeti Tough Moment. Jack's Lake, like many waters in the Kawartha region, is known for having a large population of muskies. However, sunny and post-frontal summer conditions can make the muskies disappear from any lake. Jim, John, and Pete picked apart a variety of weed spots, mixed up presentations, and remained focused. The muskies seemed to appear from nowhere, and although they missed a few, in the end they managed to boat some nice muskies. Now that's Yeti Tough. Every season is different. Sometimes you get a warm spring, sometimes you get a cold spring. You get high water, you get low water, and sometimes you get what I call the scatter effect. Because you get a situation where you've got a colder than normal spring, the weed growth isn't as good, the water temperatures are behind, and so what happens is the fish are scattered. You get some fish in the weeds, some fish on the brake line, some fish in open water. And I'm fishing with my good friend, pro guide Chris Torsano, and we got one of those kind of years that we're dealing with in early summer. So what do you think these fish have been doing out here in the chain? Exactly what you said. You know, it's just been one of those years. You know, I mean, the weather has been crazy and they are scattered. You know, we're finding a lot of fish out in the deep water that are still recovering from the spawn, but they're starting to get some weed growth and we're starting to find a few fish up in the weeds. It's you know, like my good friend Spence Petro says, fish deep, shallow, and in between, and you'll figure them out, and that's what we're gonna do. It is a foggy fog morning and you know nothing screams musky and when you get a day like this and thinking about you know going out throwing a top water uh, in these conditions and you know Chris is throwing a minnow bait picking apart these weeds we're fishing a shallow weed line that's out here and just taking our time quietly motoring through when you wake up in the morning and you got some humidity you got some fog even if it's gonna be bright and sunny doesn't matter make sure you're throwing a top water pick it apart with a minnow bait even a bucktail but get shallow in those situations because these shallow fish can be active early I can feel this solar heat man just yeah I think that's gonna do us nothing but good we need a little bit of that warm-up to get this fish's metabolism going yeah, I mean, how often do you fish a weed bed early like we did this morning? It was all foggy and you come back and the surface temperature goes up, but really you feel it in your body. You feel like, oh, I feel so much hotter and all of a sudden they're rolling. Oh, there's one. There you go. As soon as that top reader hit the surface, that's a great hit. I know, I'm kidding. Good evening. Come here, Bubba. There we go. All right. On the board. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. I mean, literally, that top reader hit the surface. I just engaged my reel and it exploded. <laughs> that awesome. was a cool bite. Yeah. Top reader. Gotta love it. Little chunk. We'll take them. All good. Careful. Cool. All right. You ready, Johnny? But they're all fun. <laughs> hey, get that one too. <laughs> We've been seeing a few fish in the weeds and one of the things that's happening, the air temperature has been dropping so it certainly got a little bit colder and when that happens and you're seeing fish in the weeds, one of the things we're noticing is that 
some of the spots that are holding the fish, the weeds are protected. Their bays or shorelines are protected from the wind. They're not out in the wind. We fish some of the windy areas that went there, so, but we're seeing fish in the calmer areas. So naturally, you just want to reproduce that situation. And you want to go back and refish those areas. Because sometimes when the temperature drops like this, those fish actually tuck tight. Oh, oh, weed cover. Oh. oh. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> And missed it. Missed it. Oh. I saw the strike. Yeah, he missed the hook though. Oh. He mouthed it and just boop, came back on it. I swear every time you talk, we get a fish. Or a fish to bite. So what are you saying? I just gotta keep talking? Just keep start singing. doing PowerPoints. <laughs> keep doing PowerPoints. <laughs> One behind mine. Yep. How come you're not eating it, buddy? Slow. There's a lot of fish in this weed bed right now. And again, were they here earlier and just not moving? No. It's hanging low on me. Sometimes when we're fishing weed beds, what we like to do is start on the deep side of the weed edge and cast in. And then other times what we'll do is we'll kind of turn back around and go from the inside out in this particular bay, we know there's some fish work in this bay right now, and we're just trying to catch them at different angles and work them different ways, and I think we're gonna go ahead and put a fish in the boat doing this. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, barely got him. Barely got him. Whoa. First class service here, man. I don't even have to touch my own fish. Beautiful. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All good. Nice. I can catch fish in Jim's boat. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Join us next week for the Big Fish Adventure on The Musky Hunter. Fish! Fish! Oh, there's one. Oh! Got him! Oh! oh. Spectacular figure eight. Got him! Yeah! Nice fish. <laughs> The Muskie Hunter has been brought to you by these fine sponsors. I can catch a fish. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can. I can. I know I can. I know I can. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I didn't even see him. <laughs> it's really close, Rick. <laughs> and you're really close to all the manatees. All the manatees. <laughs> They're eating the seagrass.